When you walk into Jimmy and Frankie Quinlan's cottage in Ardatton in County Carlow, it's like going back in time. Jimmy is something of a mechanical genius when it comes to fixing radios and sewing machines, and his collection includes a radio that dates back to the 20s. It's a, a miniature cat's whisker and crystal radio from the early 20s. Some items are not quite what they seem. The Globe is a 1940 Australian radio, had the speaker in the base and the tuning at the top and the projector beside it is a 9.5 millimeter film projector which was out just before the 8 mil and the Super 8s. The collection is full of quirky and unusual pieces. What we have here, Helen, is a collection of cigarette boxes. Uh, they were used as dispensers generally on a table in a private house and a visitor came in, he offered him a cigarette and this, I'll demonstrate, is, is one particular version. So the little dog gives you the cigarette. If you don't take it from him, he puts it back in the box again. Jimmy, what's this here, this, uh, this wooden contraption? It's a close error. It's fastened onto a door frame or onto the wall. And as you pushed it up, it extends for to hang your towels and so on and then it falls back up out of the way. It's over 60 years since Jimmy first started collecting, and then he was working in a local big house. It was probably seeing a lot of the things that we couldn't afford uh, at the time, you know. There was, there, was, there was all sorts of things in the houses there. You know, there was central heating, for instance, uh, and w which I drew in umpteen barrelfuls of coal and firewood for to keep them going in the winter time. And when the occupants of the big house were decluttering, Jimmy saw his opportunity to acquire some very interesting items. The bits and pieces that they were throwing out, uh, we, I brought a lot of them home. For instance, all electrical fittings, I have hundreds of them. Now there were lovely brass switches and holders and so on, and they were taking them out when the rural electrification came in the 50s, they were taking these out because they had been used with generators, with engines to drive the power, or maybe a water wheel. And when they went on to the mains then, they reckoned they were a bit dangerous on AC. So we took out all the nice brass switches and put in Bakelite ones. Another reminder of the big house is this knife cleaner. Before stainless steel was popular, the knives were just ordinary steel and of course when they got wet they promptly started to rust. So you had a Vono knife cleaner which had two leather discs inside and some pumice powder and you push the knife in between the two leather discs and turn the handle and that polished the blade of the knife. But not all his collectibles were found in such salubrious surroundings. I was installing a milking machine in a farm just outside Carnew and the person that owned the farm had been using that as a milking stool for to sit on to milk one of the cows. It's a steel speaker, but uh, when I found it, the brass disc was missing. So I went back after about six months to service the machine and I found the disc up on the wall plate of the old building. So that's how we got that one. Jimmy was born in the 1930s and he says despite the fact that we were a neutral country during the Second World War, it still had an impact on people's lives in this country. There was very little for anybody. It didn't matter whether you had money or hadn't money. The goods just weren't there, you know. And a lot of people didn't realise that rationing, which was introduced during the war, went on until 1951. I have ration books here now, and they're, they're current for 1951. In the 1960s and 70s, as people began to modernise, vintage went out of fashion. Sometimes the people would come and say, look, take what you want, we're throwing it all out. You know, the modern things were coming in. You know, everything, fitted kitchens came in, the old dressers, that was the pride of place in all the old cottages 
they were just made by a bonfire of. The cottage collection is a real family affair, with Jimmy's wife Frankie and daughter Anne equally involved. This is a collection of dolls, Helen. We have uh, got her up over the years, Anne and myself. And um, these are hat pins in here that um, Anne mostly collected. And uh, these are um, old christening robes. And uh, this is an old wedding dress that Shagar gave me. She found it in an old house, in the, up in the chimney of an old house. And we reckon it's been stayed away back to the 20s. Jimmy says his collection is not valuable in monetary terms, but it has an historic relevance. Any jug, old jugs with parallel sides, is generally a jam jug. You could get the jam out of it. If it had a, a pot belly, it was a milk jug usually. People will come and they'll pick out the most unusual things and, and they, they'll, they'll bring back memories, basically. There's a picture over the fireplace here and that was bought by the neighbours when the family originally moved in here in the late 1930s. People pick on different things. Uh, some of the delf on the dresser now, they go around and they'd say, oh, I remember one of those in our house. As a matter of fact, a few years ago here, we had two sisters came to visit and uh, they almost came to blows in the place here before they left because one said to the other, what did you do with the big jug that my aunt so-and-so gave you? And she countered by saying, what did you do with the teapot that mother left? The finish up was that they weren't speaking to each other when they were leaving, you see. Well, the one thing about collecting is that most of the things that we've collected over the years will never, ever be made again. It's the end of the night. I hope that story afforded you a nice trip down memory lane and if you'd like to see Jimmy's collection, well you can, but only by making an appointment and his contact details are on the nationwide page of the RTE website.